All right. Welcome back. Uh, any questions before we go ahead to the next chapter? Any questions? Shall we move to chapter 14 then? Okay. All right. So chapter 13 was wonderful, right? Uh, and even as we all you know, continue to serve in different areas, whether we're business, ministry, in the workplace, in our family, uh, let this be our desire, right? That we walk in love. Uh, let love be the basis of everything that we do, right? And of course, we are all growing uh, in this aspect as well. So let's go to chapter 14. Now, after introducing the gifts of the Spirit and understanding the believer's function, now Paul is addressing proper order for these gifts to be exercised in gatherings that means in church services and the times when they meet together right start off by talking about the benefits of tongues and prophecy let's read uh, chapter 14 verse 1 to 5 right pursue love and desire spiritual gifts but especially that you may prophesy for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to god for no one understands him however in the spirit he speaks mysteries, but he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he the church may receive edification right now we must understand the context right of uh, verse 4 and 5 but let's look at verse 1 so all believers are to pursue love and also desire spiritual gifts we talked about this right uh desiring the right gift at the right time right uh now there is no restriction and on uh how many or which gift but we know that you know what we spoke about last time right desiring the the right gift at the right time right uh but again first you love and then desire spiritual gifts right so again paul is emphasizing on love being the first thing verse two and four we see for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to god for no one understands him uh, but he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. Praying in tongues is a personal benefit to each one of us. I, I'm sure that we all understand, uh, you know, praying in tongues. It's a personal prayer language, uh, and and in contrast to prophecy, tongues is something that is it, it enables us to speak mysteries. We our mind may not have thought about it. Our mind may not have knowledge about it, but we are praying. The Holy Spirit enables us to pray. Our spirit is uniting with the Holy Spirit and making intercession with God. So this makes our prayer life limitless because the Holy Spirit can use so many things or he can you know, when we are praying in tongues, we may be praying for something that we don't even know, right? We may be praying for another country. We may be praying for some other nation, or we may be praying for a group, a different group of people, right? We don't know. But here's the thing. Praying and speaking in tongues edifies us and it builds us up spiritually. Many times this has happened to me, right? Where no, we, we, we've been praying, praying for certain things right, within the church, maybe something that I've been planning for, prayed for it over you know, two, three months, but I've not really got a direction or a leading from God. But there were times I was just praying in tongues. What I prayed for maybe six or seven months back, 
immediately I get clarity. So, okay, this is what we have to do. Or there must have been a vision or a dream that I had. Now, any of us can have these visions or dreams that we don't understand that dream. Let me ask God, God, what is, can you please reveal the dream? Make, help me to understand. But maybe we don't get an answer. Maybe a year later, we're praying in tongues. God can reveal that dream in point by point precision. This is what your dream was, and this is what it means. And you're not even praying for that dream. You're all praying, you know, you've probably forgotten that dream and you're praying about something else. You're just praying in tongues. But God can do that. Right? So there are, there are wonderful benefits. And Pastor Ashish has got a book, What the Wonderful Benefits of Speaking in Tongues. I want to encourage each one of us to, uh, you know, take up this book. You can download the PDF on the website too, uh, on the publications. And, uh, you know, just read them, take time to minister and pray in the Holy Spirit. And, uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, gift that God has given us. Right? Verse 6 onwards, do everything to edify others. But now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you unless I speak to you either by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying, or by teaching? Now, to benefit people, uh, let me just mark this, right, so we know where we are, right? So to benefit people in the congregation, we must speak either by revelation, that is bringing out God's word, the truth of God's word, uh, things that people may not have known, you're bringing it, you're revealing it to them, revelation. It could be anything, it could be something very simple, right? Uh, for example, no, the the Samaritan woman. No, you 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 could just be saying, you know, what about the Samaritans? Why did they hate the Jews? You're just bringing out some truth, and then the whole meaning becomes so much more powerful. But right? you bring revelation. Two is knowledge, imparting spiritual truth to build people up. Right. So you could be talking about uh, the epistles of what Jesus did, the parables. There's so much right in the scriptures. So imparting spiritual truth the parable of the sower this you know the seed is thrown uh the seed is some fall on good ground some fall on thorns or rocky places so what is the seed the seed is god's word so you're just imparting knowledge you're helping them to understand right three is prophesying by divine inspiration so god is speaking through to you about certain situations and then you're releasing that prophetic word within the church and four, teaching the truth of God's word, right? This uh, uh, teaching, right? Being able to spend time in detail talking and teaching about the scriptures, right? Like, for example, what we're doing in First Corinthians, it's a teaching. It's not, it's not just a message or a sermon, but it's a teaching, right? So these are the four things that we must do to benefit people in the congregation. Right. Now, verse 7, he says, unless what is spoken is understood by the congregation, it will not benefit them. Now, in Paul is saying, for my personal time, I will pray in tongues. Right? I will pray. And later on, he says, I pray in tongues more than any one of you. And I will pray in tongues. But if I have to, you know, in a congregational setting, if I want people to be benefited in the congregation. I must bring revelation, knowledge, prophecy, prophesy, and teaching. And that's how they will grow. They will mature. Now, does it mean that Paul is saying, don't speak tongues in church? No. He's saying, you can do that, but make sure these four are done, because it, it shouldn't be that we are only speaking in tongues and we go back home. And maybe a group of people are wondering, what is happening? And there was no teaching, there was no preaching, there was no prophesying, there was no imparting. Um, so Paul is trying to say, our goal is that we must build people up. Right? Verse 12, even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, 
let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel right now this word zealous since you are zealous for spiritual gifts now we know that uh, zealous is being passionate right we know that the corinthian church was already flowing in the gifts and, and the gifts of the spirit and maybe there were some of them in the church who were saying hey i also want these gifts right? i also want to uh, flow in these gifts how come this person uh, you know has a prophetic word word of knowledge or the gift of healing and i don't have anything so maybe there were people within the church who, who were you know uh, zealous for more gifts but he finishes that verse in verse 12 he says let it be for the edification of the church right so our goal in exercising spiritual gifts is to build people Spiritual gifts must be you must be exercised as a motivation to build people. Right? Uh, Paul is not telling them don't be zealous for the gifts. Right? He's not saying no, now everyone are flowing in the gifts of the spirit. No, you don't be zealous at the right time, God will give you. Paul is not saying that. He's saying good, but okay. but their zeal has to be properly directed, which means uh the zeal should be for the edification of the church, not because my my neighbor can speak in tongues and I can't speak in tongues, or uh, my uh, uh, life group leader can you know uh, prophesy, or so even I want to prophesy. Not for that. The zeal is good, but what is the reason for that zeal? To edify the church, right? And and so he's making it very clear here. He's telling the church, okay, it's good. Good, you're zealous for the gifts, zealous for the things of God. But why are you zealous? You must ask yourself that. Is it for your personal, oh, so that people can recognize you and appreciate you and talk about you, or is it for the building of the church? Right? So that's a question that we must ask ourselves. Verse 13 through 15. Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. With this conclusion, then, I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray in the understanding as well. I will sing in the spirit, and I will sing in the understanding, uh, sing with the understanding as well. Now, you and I as believers, when we are speaking in tongues, the only way we can benefit the congregation is by interpreting what we speak. Right? Otherwise, they are not going to, they're just going to hear words that have no meaning. They're just going to hear syllables. Right? Most likely, they're not going to understand. But we know we are praying in a tongue. But when we pray in tongues, our spirit empowered by the Spirit of God does the praying, and hence the mind is not involved. So what is Paul what is Paul saying? We must learn to pray in tongues and to pray with understanding. So that is pray in the Spirit and pray with understanding. Sing in the Spirit, sing with understanding. Now, the term pray with the spirit and sing with the spirit is used here to refer to praying and singing in tongues. Right? Uh, now, it, it, it does not mean that, you know, now for example, let's picture this. There's a church service, church is going to start. I can't go and keep praying in tongues, singing in tongues. Right? Because it's not going to bring understanding to the congregation. They're not going to understand what, what I'm saying. So, but they, they may be worshiping God and all of it. But for me to, uh, how do I put this? How, for if, the, if I want the congregation to grow, to understand the songs that they're singing and to make it meaningful, I need to sing with understanding. Okay, these are the words of the songs, these are the lyrics. The lyrics are up there. Let's all sing together. And that has so much more has a lot of meaning. But Paul is also saying there will be times the Holy Spirit will 
work in this you know in, in, in during the church service or during your personal time and you will begin to pray and speak sing in tongues now don't exclude that out let there be a combination let there be a flow of both together right now like i said you know when you're praying in tongues and personally you don't have to interpret everything right you can spend several hours praying in tongues and then you know how many of you have gone through this maybe uh, i'll just share this right uh, many times when i'm very tired or weak right just don't have strength or maybe i don't i don't have the energy to read or anything many times but i just said okay let's let's start praying in tongues right? just five minutes or ten minutes many times it's happened after ten minutes suddenly there's a strength that just that tiredness goes right uh, or there are many times when you know I remember this one Sunday many years back right? uh, it was in Bangalore I had to lead the worship and uh, share the word but I had a terrible headache that morning it came to a point that you know, I usually don't miss church but keep a point that I said, can anybody, uh, you know, lead the worship and share the message? Because I don't think I can today. It was a terrible, terrible, terrible pain. Like I prayed, I did everything, but nothing really worked. So I dragged myself to church, took the guitar, and there was nobody else to lead. I had to lead the worship. And I just began, you know, just very tired i thought when will this get over when will the sermon get over when will i just go home and lie down i just had that feeling throughout but i remember that day that sunday very clearly just took the guitar began to exhort just began to sing in a tongue initially after the first song uh i realized that there was freshness i felt like i've you know I'm all fresh, like I've slept for 10 hours or so, and I've had a good breakfast. I felt that way, just refreshed in my spirit, my body as well. Now, how did that happen? It was just that I began to pray in tongues. I didn't pray, God, remove my headache, remove my pain, help me do. I didn't do all that. And I didn't realize that my praying in tongues has caused this headache to just be lifted up. So sometimes, when we are speaking in tongues, we don't, for our personal use especially, we don't need the interpretation always. Right? If you get the interpretation, it's good. But if you don't get it, just continue to pray uh, in tongues. Right? There are several areas where tongues and interpretations uh, can be beneficial for our personal use. Right? So we see here, uh, tongues and interpretation for our personal use one for personal guidance and direction the plans of god and the purposes of god in our life many many times right it can happen to us we're praying in a tongue praying in tongues or singing in tongues suddenly god says here's what you have to do do this or do that go this way don't do this or, or, uh, you suddenly begin to understand God's plan for you, right? Everything becomes clear, right? Second, for decision making in matters that you are responsible for, right? Now, as leaders, maybe some of us here are pastors or leading businesses, leading ministries, uh, uh, leading families, right? And as a family man, you, you are the leader, you are making decisions for the house. Right, and, and, and so it's very, very important. These these decisions are crucial decisions, right? Maybe it's cool to put your children in, whether a job change is required at the moment, uh, anything which is crucial, right? Uh, praying in tongues will help you. God will really, you know, lead you towards making the right decision. And thirdly, praying in tongues help us to bring revelation and insight into the things of God, right? Uh, it, how God works how does God work how did he work in the Old Testament how did he work in the New Testament the ways that he usually ministers the way that God uh, you know uh, right now when we look around globally as a church how is God 
ministering to people. So the more we pray in tongues, we get revelation and insight into the things of God. Right. So these three uh, are few benefits of uh, speaking in tongues for personal guidance, direction, understanding. Two, for decision making matters. Right. Uh, and three, for revelation and insight into the things of God. Right. So I want to encourage each one of us, right? Uh, maybe some of us are already flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. Just build on that. Just grow. Continue. It, it, it's just a drop in the ocean, right? We have so much that we can grow. The, our prayer life becomes limitless. We just keep praying. Uh, we don't need to be in a closed room, kneeling. We don't. It's not always that. That's not always the picture. You can be driving. You can be sitting and having a meal. You can be, you know, just. Uh, spending time uh, with your friends and speaking in tongues inside inside of you, so it's limitless, right? So uh, those who are not speaking in tongues, I want to encourage you. Just continue to pursue God. Don't be discouraged. Maybe you know you've been praying, but uh, you don't see a result. Just continue to pursue God. God is faithful. He will release the gifts uh, into your lives, right? Right. So let's move from. To into chapters verse 16 to 20. Verse 16. Okay, um, there's a question. Yes, Christopher, please go ahead. Uh, yes, Pastor. I just wanted to find out with regards to, uh, uh, you know, if it's a small group of people who are, uh, you know, three to five people who are, you know, praying together and, you know, uh, are also. Uh, uh, you know, uh, doing doing a Bible study, for example, can they can they um, have us have a uh, I mean reserve a session? Uh, I mean a part of that session for praying in tongues, uh, and you know, um, can they have a, you know um, you know a particular area that they want to pray for? So, for example, you want to pray for them. For the country or they want to pay for the country's leaders or something and then they then those three or five people three or four or five people uh pray in tongues is that something that um that uh is 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 i mean is, is good uh good to be done i just wanted to understand that sure right that's a good uh, question christopher now there are two ways to come up uh, come to that question now if there are three four people small group if all of them speak in tongues Right. Then all of them can, you know, you can set aside time. Hey, let's leave the last 15 minutes before we disperse. Let's leave the last 15 minutes to pray in tongues. Right? We can do that. Now, if there is maybe even one person who does not know how to speak in tongues, the good thing to do is not to make that person feel bad. Hey, I don't have the gift of tongues or whatever. You know? So good thing to do is as a group leader or as a as one of the team members that four or five of them you can tell hey uh, you know what there are this is what the holy spirit is this is what the gift of tongues is when we speak in tongues we're praying to god so you may not understand what we are praying it is the holy spirit speaking through us to god uh, so you can pray with understanding right so you can encourage them and then you can pray in the team now for example you give a prayer point you say okay let's pray for the nation right now Remember, when we are praying in the spirit, we are praying without understanding, right? So we may begin to pray in tongues, but we may not be praying for the nation. We may be praying for somebody's brother somewhere in a different country, or we may be praying for, you know, uh, just something else, you know, that God, uh, the second coming of Christ. But, Here's the thing. That's why Paul says you pray with understanding and you pray in the spirit. So you combine them together. So, for example, what I would do, Christopher, is I would say, okay, let's pray for the nation that we are living in, that God will touch many souls. So the first thing I would do is I will pray with understanding. Right? I would say, okay, let's join together. We pray. Right? Father, bless our nation, bless the people, bless the government, bless our, our leaders. And uh, bless the things that are, that are good, you're going to do. So just pray with understanding. And while I'm doing that, I'm asking the Holy Spirit to put words into my heart. 
right? Now, I'm asking the Holy Spirit to help me to speak uh, with, the, with the Spirit, speak in the Spirit, right? And so give me these words. Now, it's not necessary. I may be praying in line with, you know, exactly for the nation. God may, may ask me to pray for something else. Uh, I may be praying in the Spirit on something else. But I've also prayed with understanding, right? So as a group, they all know, okay, we've prayed with understanding. Now the Holy Spirit is ministering to us to pray with, uh, pray in the Spirit. So I've done both. I've prayed with understanding. I've prayed, I'm praying also in the Spirit. So I'm, I'm not making that one person feel that, hey, uh, we didn't pray for the nation at all. No. That was a prayer point. They know that we prayed for the prayer point, but I'm not also grieving the Holy Spirit by saying, no, I will not speak in tongues. I will not pray in tongues. So I'm praying with understanding. I'm also praying in the Spirit. Is that okay, Chris? Yes, thank you. Yes. So what one of the things that we do is in the life groups, uh, you know, not many of our, especially our youth life groups, not all of them will be speaking in tongues, right? So what we encourage them is first pray, have a, maybe four or five prayer points, pray, and then you can leave the last 10, 15 minutes to pray in tongues. And so that way, you know, they are free to just minister what the Lord is uh, speaking through them. So, right. Okay. Right, verse 16 to 20. Otherwise, if you bless with the Spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say, Amen, at your giving thanks, since he does not understand what you say? For you indeed give, give thanks well, but the other is not edified. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all, yet in the church I would rather speak standing that I may teach others also than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brethren, do not be children in understanding. However, in malice be babes, but in understanding be mature. Right, so Paul is saying, like he's basically telling the Corinthian church, now don't make it like a competition. I can speak in tongues. He, he can speak in tongues. He can't speak. He's saying that even though if I if I keep speaking in tongues, if the other person is not edified, I would rather speak five good words of understanding so that the person can be edified. We can direct our prayer in tongues towards specific purposes, but the Apostle Paul is saying that he, he prayed a lot in tongues, but when in public, he preferred to pray, uh, you know, especially in the congregation, it is better to pray in a known language than speaking in tongues. Uh, and why is he saying that? Because the others can say amen to the prayer. And I think it's it, it makes so much sense what Paul is saying. He's not you know, demeaning the gift by saying, okay, don't speak in tongues. He's saying, I pray in tongues more than any of you all, more than any of you all. But that's in my private time. When I'm in public or when I'm in a congregation, it's better I speak in a known language so everyone can understand and say amen to it. So Paul is telling the believers and he's inviting the believers to be mature and understanding the proper use of the gift of speaking in tongues. Okay? He's not against it, but he's saying use it the right way, at the right time, at the right place. Right. Next one. Tongues. Okay. Yes, Christopher. Go yes, ahead. Pastor. I just had a question with that uh, that point you just now raised. So, uh, you know, when they when you know the, in the very first time when the um, when the apostles um, uh, spoke in tongues, um, there was also if I if I'm if I'm correct to say. Uh, there was also this um, this speaking in 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 different languages that could be yes. understood by people from different uh, you know different uh, places that they came from, and uh, 
I just wanted to understand, um, you know, have you have you you know experienced that? Um, it may not be personally, but have you actually you know seen that happen where there are people who have you know suddenly got uh, you know uh, you know got that um, that um, power from the from the Holy Spirit where they've you know started talking in a language that they've never spoken in and is that also considered to be um uh, you know speaking in tongues because this is not uh, i mean this may be a language that would that is that sounds uh, like no that doesn't sound like any language for for most people but that language is understood by some people as 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 an actual language that they that they've understood you know so just wanted to understand that yeah that's a very good question so uh what happened in the book of Acts, uh, just to you know, uh, reiterate what Christopher was trying to say, in the book of Acts, uh, people have come all across from different parts of the different neighboring cities. They've come into uh, Jerusalem for the Feast of the Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit falls on uh, the 120, and they began to speak in different languages, languages that were unknown to them, but the others heard uh, could understand. Because they said, "Hey, they're speaking tongues. Uh, they're they're praising God in my language, uh, which is not a Jewish language, right?" Now that is speaking in different tongues. Yes, uh, God can again. The Holy Spirit can do that. I personally have not seen it with my uh, or or heard it from my own experience, firsthand experience. But I have read a book where uh, this uh, man of God. Uh, had was had gone to another country and he was ministering and as he was ministering he began to speak in a tongue uh, he was powerfully anointed at that time I forget which year and I forget which book is this but I just vaguely remember the instance uh, where he began to just pray and uh, there was a powerful anointing and he was praying and uh, what happened he was praying in tongues and after the service uh, a woman came and said you were speaking a very rare dialect of the Chinese and you were praising God I know a little bit of that language because my mother speaks that dialect so you were praising God in a rare one of the you know rural areas you know we know that you know different villages have different uh, you know language different kinds of dialects of the same language so she was speaking uh, that pastor was praying a very rare of the chinese language and the woman in the congregation said my mother was from that village from that town speak that language how did you do how and she was surprised and she wrote this encounter as well so i i forget which book and i forget what what the incident was but that's the only instance that i know of uh i haven't heard of any other instance where uh, you know somebody speaking in tongues and another person have was able to uh, you know it was their language uh, i haven't really come across that uh, uh, but again we cannot put god in a box maybe it's happened maybe i don't know about it or maybe there are many times it's happened in different places uh but God can do that because He did it in the Book of Acts. But He can still do it now. All of a sudden, we may speak a a, a dialect of a different country. Uh, he can do it if He wants to do it. Uh, so yeah, Christopher, we we be open to that, right? But if our if we again, we must understand that when we are praying in tongues, uh, Paul says our mind is unfruitful. We we, we are not going to understand. Uh, mind is not going to perceive, uh, but it's the spirit that is making forth intercession. So, as we are praying, we, our mind should not be: Am I speaking this language, or am I making sense, or uh, is it something that is in line with the syllables and all of those? All those things should go off, and our mind should be that: Hey, uh, my spirit is aligned with the spirit of God. So. Yes, Christopher. Uh, personally, no, I haven't uh, heard of any anything, any any situation that's happened. Okay. 
All right. Tongues assigned to the believers. Right. Uh, verse 21. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak to this people, and yet for all that they will not hear me, says the Lord. Therefore, tongues are a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, for those who believe. Now, the Holy Spirit can prompt us to use, prompt the use of, you know, speaking in tongues as a sign to the believer. How? The person speaking in a tongue, inspired by the Holy Spirit, could be speaking the language that the unsaved person can understand and deliver a message about the person or pointing people to Jesus, just bringing the gospel. And this is what we were just talking about. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. It was a sign. Tongues became a sign to the unbelievers. Right? When the 120 were praying and singing and praying to God, the others didn't know about Jesus. They didn't know about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But they were praying and they were glorifying God and for his great deeds in, in the language that they could understand. What happened? They immediately said, hey, either they are too drunk or either they are from, this is from God. And one group of people said they're too drunk, walked away. But the other group said, this is from God. And there was 10,000 people in the church that day. Was it, I, I'm sure, I'm, not, I'm sorry, I, was it 10 or 5,000? I'm not sure. Uh, but there were thousands of people added into the church. That one event. Right? So Paul is remembering that. Right? Uh, and he, he's saying it can be a sign for the unbelievers. But prophecy is, it impacts the unbelievers also in a great way. Right? Verse 23 and 25. Therefore, if the whole church comes together in one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come in those who are uninformed or unbelievers, will they not say that they are out of their mind? But if all prophesy, and an unbeliever or an uninformed person comes in, he is convinced by all, he is convicted by all. And thus the secrets of the hearts are revealed, and so, falling down on his face, he will worship and report that God is truly among you. Right? While tongues is a primary way or a primary means to speak to God, tongues can be assigned to the believers. And same way, prophecy. When we are prophesying something to somebody uh, or, or in a church gathering and we're prophesying, and say, for example, an unbeliever comes and we're giving a prophetic word right, about, his, about the future, about things that are ahead for him, that means that can really touch that person's life. So prophecy serves to edify the believer, the local church body, but it can also be used to impact a non-believer and you know, just exposing the sin in his or her life and leading them towards Christ. So we see here, Paul is not saying gifts are better, prophecy is better. No. He's saying both. He's giving you know, remember the chapters before we saw, he talked about the body. Can the head say to the leg, I don't need you? Can the eyes say to the ears, I don't need you? No. So, so he's using that same kind of principle and he's saying, speaking in tongues is good, but doesn't mean I don't need prophecy. I, just because I have prophecy doesn't mean I don't need speaking in tongues. I need all of them uh, because everything comes together and and when we do it together, we are equipping the body and the church of Christ is being built up. Right? Um, I think we'll stop here because uh, I, I want to spend more time on this. So uh, we'll stop here. We'll pick up from next class uh, so that we can, you know, this is a very important topic and uh, I don't want to just abruptly stop. We have another five minutes itself. So. Uh, we'll stop here and then we can uh, just pick up from next class. Let me see how much is. Yeah, so there's quite a lot. So uh, we'll, pick, we'll stop here, pick up from next week, and uh, talk about 
all these you know, talk about speaking in tongues and prophecy and all of that and the importance of it. So, all right. Uh, any questions? Any questions? Or shall we close in prayer? Okay, let's close in prayer. Uh, maybe one of us can please close. Kennedy, Rose, anyone can close. Do we? Yes, anyone feel free to close in prayer. All right, let me pray. Yes, go ahead. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we bless your name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration because you're a great God. Father, we thank you for this section and we thank you for the word that we've heard. And we pray, Lord, that that you will take you will take absolute control, oh God. Have your way, oh God. Teach us your word. Help us, oh God, to know more of you. Help us, oh God, to understand who you are and who we are in you. Thank you for your servant whom you've used, oh God, to share your word. And we pray that you continually keep him, oh God, for your glory. We thank you, oh God, for APC Bible College. And I thank you for everyone, oh God, in this class. Blessed be your holy name. For when next we gather again to listen to your word, Father, we pray there shall be testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Alison. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful week ahead. I'll see you next week. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor.